Okay, so uh, Shalom Yasharela, we're back. We're going to pick up with a thought in uh, Mark chapter 9. We're going to read the Bible Ra'ash or in the Hebrew first. So now this is Mark chapter 9 in uh, verse 1. And it reads, Why Amar Al Yaham Aman Amar Anya Lakam Kaya Yash Man. Could you mute? Yeah, mm -hmm. Turn turn off the speaker. Yash Man Ain Madium Pa Ashara Laa Yata Aimwa Mawath Aid Kaya Yara Awa Malakwath Pa Alahayam Baa Bagaba Ba Gaba Warrior or Gaba Wara Two Waya Kharia Shashaf Yawamyam Bakwak Yahawasha Af Batarwas Wa Af Wa Af Yaikwab Wa Af is James. Wa'af Yaw Khanan John. Waya uh Waya Ailam Ayal Har the Gaba Afwa Labadam Yawa Shafna the Ayan Yaham three. Wabagad Yawa Nahayawa uh, maza, mazararium la banyam maad kashalag ashara <coughs> la an yawako kawabas uh, la kawabas lahala lahalabium kamwana so la kamwaham yeah, come more hum. Four. Wa yara a al yaham. What happened? I don't know. Yeah. And catch up. Okay. So four. Wa yara a al yaham. Uh, al ya uh, salak ala ala yawa. Nice. Wa masha. Moses, Madabar, Madabarium, Ain, Yahawashai. Five, Waya Ain, Batarwas, Waya Ama, O, Yahawashai, Rabia, Tawab, Ha, Yawa, Hayawa, Fan, Ba, Ha, Na Aisha, Na, Shalash, Sakawath, Laka, Akhath Walama Walamasha Akhath Walla Alla Yawa La Aliawa Akhath Six Kaya La Yadai Ma Yadabar Kaya Hayawa Baba Holyan Seven Wayahaya Ainun Sawak Sawakak Ail Yaham, Waya Taza, Mun, Hainan, Kowo, Amara, Za, Bunyam, Yad Yadya, or Yadi Yadya, Oyawa, Shamaiwa, Eight, Waha Wahama, Aba Yatwa, Ka, Waka, Afa Um, Wala, Rawa, Iwad, Ayash, Balathia, Af, Yahawasha, Labadwa, Atam, Nan, Wayaradwa, Mun, Haha, Waya, Waya Za, Ra, Salah, Waya Za, Yaram, Laba, Laba, Lafia, Hagayad, Wayash, Af, Ashara, Raawa, Aid, Kiya, Yakwam Bun 
ha adam man hamathim ten, where shemawa af adabar bala balaba balababash. This one balababash. Oh, salak. Yeah, yeah. It's not a show. Balababum. Balababum. Come with your song. Balababum. Where the rush were, La the Aif ma, Hayaa, Hatha Kwa, Kwa ma, Mun, Hamathia, eleven. Where Sha'a, where Sha'a Lawa, La Amar, Ma, Za, Amarian, Ha Sawa, Sawaparium, Kaya, Al Yawa, Bawa Ah, Ya Bawa Ah, Ba Raash Wana, twelve. Waya Ain, Waya Amar, Laham, Hana, Alayawa, Baa, 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 so like Bara Ash Wana, Waya Shayab Af. Pako Wama Batawab Ail Ban A Aram Halaa Kawa Waina Haraba Waya Maas Thirteen Abo Ma Anya Lakam Gum Baa Aliawa Wagum Aishwa Lawa Karataswana Kaashara Kathawab Ayliwa, fourteen. Wayahaya Kabawa Awa, O Hathalama Yad Yawa, Salak. Hathalama Yad Yum, Wayara Aim Bar Sabayab with them. Wasawa Sawaparium, Mathawa Kak Yum. A thumb. So the schools of the uh, houses of the school, schoolhouses, synagogues. Them. Oh, a thumb. Yeah, because we, we sit in doing the, uh, the prayers, right? Yeah. Uh, Saparium, and then wa, chak That's a statue. So the schools of statues and. Schools of the law, something like that. So 15, it says, Wako ha'aim kara awa thum athwa kan tramawa weyara batazwa ow yawa weyar sha'owa lawa la shala la shalawa. 16, weyar sha'ow af hasawaparium ma atum. Mathawa Khak Yam Aim Hum seventeen. Waya Ain a Khad Man Ha Aim Waya Amar Rabbiya Ha Baa Fiya O Yaka Af Banya Ashura Rokha Alam Bakwa Rabwa eighteen. Wahaya Bako Makwa Mashara Ya kha zawa hawa a ma ra taza taz afwa waya rad riyarwa wa kharak af shanywa waya bash gawapwa wa a mon o thalamayad yaka bag rashwa wala a ya kowa. Nineteen. Waya aim waya amar laham hawa ag dawad balafya ma ma amayan aid mafya ahaya aim kam aid mafya a sabo af kam ha kwaya so haba. Aba ya awa. You say kwa? No, you say kwa. Oh, okay. Haba ya wa. 
Okay, so Habaya Awa Afwa Lapanya to efface him to his face. Twenty Waya Baya Awa Lapanya Wa Wayahaya Kaashara Raawa Haroka Haya Ra Wataz Tazanwa Paf um Waya Po Aratza Waya Thag Walo Waya Wa Rad Ra Yarwa twenty one Waya Shao Af Habiwa Kama Yawam uh, Yawam Yam Waya Thum Lawaza Af Waya Ama Maya Wamya Na I War Yawa twenty two Wa Pa'inyam Rabwa Hapayo Athwa Gum Baash Gum Bamayam Laa Salam Laha Aba Yadwa Ak Um Yako Thawako Rikham Ayo Yanawa Wa Aizar Nawa twenty two sorry twenty three Way Amar Oyawa Yahawasha La Amar Um Thawako La Ha Amayan Ko Yawako Ama Amayan twenty four we have fun, Abaya, Haya, Lad, Af, Quo, Wa, Babak, Ya, Waya, Amarm, Adanya, Anya, Maama, Yan, Aizar, Na, La Kasar, One, Wamawa, Nafya, Twenty Five, Waya, Ra, Yahawa, Shai, Af, Aim, Mafakwa, Bataz Oyawa Waga Air Baroka Hatama La Amar Roka Alam Waka Rush Anya Matazawa Matazawa Matazawaka Taza Mamunwa Wa O Fasap Labawa Bawa Iwa twenty six Oya Taza Aik, Waya Rataza, that's a lot. Waya Ra Taza Taz Afwa, yeah, this is connected. Yeah. <coughs> Afwa Ma Ad Waya Taza Wa Yahaya Kamath Aid Ashara Amawa. Rabia uh, Kaya Gawai 27 Where Kazak Yahawashai by Yadwa Wayana Ya Aihwa Wayakwam 28 Yahaya Kashara Baa Abaya Fa Wayasha Alawa Alama Yad Yawa Bahaya Wathum Laba Labadam Afwa Ma Dua Anaknawa La A Yakol Nawa Laga Rashwa Twenty Nine Way Amar Al Yaham Amayan Haza Yataza La A Yataza Kaya Um Gathapala, so that Gathapala, Babataza wash thirty. We had Tazawa Sha, so that Masham Waya I Bawa Bagala Yo Walla A Aba Laha. Would die la Hayash thirty one Kia Haya Malamad Ath Thalama Yadyawa La Amar O Yaham 
Kya Aithiad Bun Ha Adam Lahama Sar Bayadya Bunyam Adam Waya Para Paraga Wa Wa Akarya Ashara Naha Naharag Yakwam Bayawash so uh, by your one, I keep saying one like a, a shot. It's the third time I did it. Three times? Oh no, it's okay. It happened to me, but I like to hear what you read in Hebrew. By your one, Hashalayash, yeah, thirty-two. Waham la'a habayanwa ach adabam. Wa ya ya ra wa la sha o a wathwa thirty three. Wa ya wa ya ba o kapar na kawash oh uh uh brother your number yeah. your latest you can just throw it on the back of this. You can be right on the back of this. All right, it's long distance now, but it's cool. Uh, we are Tazar. I'm gonna do 30 again from the top. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Um, that I'm down that far. I'm down that far already. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, I'll do 33. She said, Nah. Uh, what? Not uh, what? Do thirty three. Waya waya ba a o kapar na kawam wabaha ya watwa wabayas wago awatam ma asawa kak sam ayash aim. For Aihua, but a bar, thirty four. Boya car, Yashua, Kaya, Hatha I Shakwa, but a badarak, Maya, Hawaa, Hagarawo, Baham, thirty five. Boya Shab, Boya Kora, O Shanyam, Haishara, Boya. Ma O Yahum Ayash Kaya Yaka Pataz Baha Yawath Hara Ashwan Hawa Yahaya Haakarwan La Kalam Wama Sharath Kalam thirty six Waya Kwak Yalad Waya I Sha Yadawa, why are why are I doing the shot again? Yeah, I'm saying why are. Dude, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Keep saying my shot. Why are I maya dawa bath will come? Why are kaba kaba kwa wa why are amar laham? Got that one. Thirty-seven. Ko Ashara Yakwabo Basha Bashamya Yalad Akhad Kaza Hawa Makwabo Awathya Wako Ashara Awathya Yakwabo Ayananwa Makwabo Wa Salak Awathya Kaya Um Af Ashara Shalak the uh, thirty eight. Waya Ain, Yaw Khanan, Waya Amar, O Yawa, Rabaa, Raa, Rayanawa, Ayash, Magarash, Shadyam, Pashamka, Waa, Wayananwa, Hawa, Hawalak, Akhar, Akharyanawa, Wana Kala Nawa Yain Asharala A 
Halak, a car you now on thirty nine. Boya Amar, you have a shy, oh, Takala Ahwa, Kaya, a young, a yash, a sha, Gabba, Gabba Wara, Bashamya, Waya, Waya Wako, Bama, Bama Hara, Ladabar, Baya. Raiha forty one uh forty Kaya ko ashara ayan noa nagad noa hawa a ba aid noa forty one Kaya ko amasha amasha kwa af kum kawas mayam bashamya ayo ashara a thumb lamashiyak Aman, Amar, Anya, Lakam, Kiya, La'a, Yabad, Shakawa, 42. Wako, Hama, Ka, Salak, Hama, Ka, Shi, Akhal, Hakwa, Hakwatanyam, Hama, Amar, Yanyam, Baya, Tawa, Lawa, Shaya, Fala, Halach, Rakab, Ayel, Tazawa, Ah, Tazawa, Ah, Wa, Wa, Shalak, Bayam, forty three, Wa, Um, Yatka, Fashaka, Yowa, Quataza, Quataza, Taz, Afham, Salak, Afha, Tawa, Laka, Labawa, Quatan Laka Yayam Mahaya Mahayawa Laka Shafya Yadyam Wafalak O Eyanam O Haash Ashara Laa Thaka Bak forty four Ashara Sham Thawalai Tham Laa Thamawaf Wa Asham La Thakaba forty five. Wa um uh Ragoka Thakash Yoka Wa Tazataz Afa Tawab Laka Labawa Asak Laha Yayam Mahaya Mahaya Waf Ko Shafya Regolium wa thamala salat wa tha sha lam la ga yanam oh wa tha shalak okay wa tha shalak la ga la ga ya nam o ha ash ashara la a takaba forty six ashara sham so, uh, light them. Oh, oh, yeah, la ah, so like you. Tama wath, wa ash, wa asham, la ah, thakaba. Forty seven. Wa um, a yanka, thakasha yoka, a kor, afha, tawa, blaka, la bawa ah, oh. Malakwa ha alahayam, but I yun a kath Mahaya Mahaya wath the car Shafya a yun yum with a shalak la gaya la gaya num forty eight Ashara Shum Thawa Thawa Lightum la ah Thama wath. Wa a sham la a thakaba forty nine. Kia ko a yash baash yashalak oh yeah ya malak wa ko quarabun offer ba malak ya malak. Fifty. Tawab 
Hamalach wa am Hamalach Yahya Sapo Bama Sasakonwa Awakwa Yahya Lakam Malach Bakwa Rab Kam Wa Yahya Shalom Bayan Yakam. <clears throat> okay. Imagine reading it and somebody who knows the fluent Hebrew and they hear that. What? What did you say? Uh -huh. That's another word. Uh, what? Repeat that again. Yeah, I, gotta, I gotta go with my alphabets. Huh? I gotta go with my alphabets because I don't even, I can't read my letters right. Good God. What's going on? You say it every day. You pray it every day. I mean, I know you pray this. You pray every day. In my head. Oh, I read my out. I read this. Oh, better than me. Hmm? You cold? Why are you cold? <laughs> well, my buddy here left. He went to work. Uh, he didn't say. Okay. Because he called me last night. Thank you, Everybody. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> So this is uh, Mark chapter 9. Mm -hmm. The city read from about 1346. That's a 47. 1347 to 1411. Okay. So this is uh, Mark chapter 9, verse 1. It's actually the last part of. Uh, we left off in Mark 8. It says, He said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them which stand here, which shall not taste of death, for they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Now I remember um Khan was going into this. Uh when they say shall not taste of death, we're saying to ourselves, Oh man, these guys are living forever. These there were some some vampires there or something, some kind of immortals. They were there at that time, and they just been around. But remember, there's two deaths, right? There's death, like you know, you die. Right. But there's the second death, right? Okay? It's like you have the first resurrection, you have the second death, right? So that's how you can make sense of this, recognizing that there's different deaths, right? Right. True. Because we know. We may live a spiritual death in our in our life, and that sounds kind of oxymoronic. But if you live a life of wickedness, right, it's like you're spiritually dead, right? If you'll come back, another chance, your third or fourth generation, hopefully to get it right next time around, or not. But then the ultimate judgment comes, but when Christ makes the second coming, that's the second death that we all face, and that's what he's talking about because he says clearly. The kingdom of God come with power. We're just talking about Christ made the second coming, which is the first resurrection, the second death. So the link with nine and one, just four different scriptures, but they all just give you details around, you know, what the second death is and what it represents. But the link with uh, nine and one, you could just write down uh, all in Revelation. Revelation chapter two and verse 11. Revelation 2 and 11. Also, you can write down Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. Revelation 20 and 6. Also, verse 14, that same chapter. 26 and then 14. Mm -hmm. And then one more is. Uh, Revelation 21 and 8. <clears throat> so we want to make sure we take part in that for resurrection. Because if we do, by walking the straight and narrow of Christ, 
in this life or any, any as many lives we may have until Christ comes back. Mm -hmm. We could partake in that first resurrection. It tells you that the second death had no power over that. But let's continue on. Verse 2 is what we're reading in Hebrew. Very important uh, situation, man, in the gospel. After six days, Jesus, or Yahweh Shad, take it with him, Peter and James and John, and out of his 12, his uh, top few disciples, they got to, to see certain things that the other 12 didn't. This is one of them. It says, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. He was transfigured before them. So he went to this transfiguration. It was like he levitated and his face shone with light. Think of it kind of like what we read in uh, Exodus when uh, Moses came off the mount after being given the law from the Most High. And it says that his face shone, right? Shone with brightness. He says, because the wisdom that he was given by the Most High made his face so bright. He had to put a, a cloth over his face. So, who did that? Yahshua, uh, who's walking down with him? Or Jacob? Moses. Okay, Moses' face was like that. Well, who put the cloth on him? I'm not sure. I have, well, to, I have to read it. How many names did he you? Just, you know, just talk. Somebody did. Yeah, you're right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Turn that light off. That's something to look up. So, it says he transfigured before them. So, it's not exactly the same, but similar. This being on a high level, because of course it's Yahweh shot himself. But still holy, still holy nonetheless. 13, it says, and his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can wipe them. Right? At least they have uh, in Israel you have the, what they call the fuller's field. A special place you take to get to wash like fabric, especially like fabric used to make like uh not just garments, but like even like tents and coverings, things like that. You had a place you would go, like to uh like a, kind of like an embankment, like a lake, but then they would use things like niter or ferment urine even, and they make a, what they call ammonia today. But they would do that in the fullest field, and they would wash fabrics out there. When you read about, you go to the Zonovan and look up occupations and perfection, perfect, uh, occupations and professions, and lights and perfection, right, urine and thumbnail? <laughs> occupations and professions, you'll see Fuller, you'll see the description as far as what a Fuller did and how they did their job. A lot of bats, bats, and chemical bats. Huh? Some of the dangers, and they sometimes I see videos of them in it, you know, in the bats. And mm -hmm. That's what they, they're professionals. Right. But yeah, just like uh, you know, clean up with ammonia, we'll get the job done, but you don't have to smell that, you don't have to breathe that stuff in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So reading on in, uh, in verse four, it says. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Yahweh. So they came in the in the spirit and talked with Yahweh. Now imagine that he's seeing that, right? Well, you know, that's it's not something you see every day, right? And then, and then being privileged to witness that face to face. That's that's awesome. You know, he's Christ, of course, on you know, he's the one, but then even our great prophets like Moses and Elias there too? Wow. I would have been speechless. Verse like, 5, it says, uh, and Peter answered, oh, sorry. He's like, wow, you know, you you, you see it, Moses doing, doing the New Testament. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle with this stuff. You see Moses and Elias, and those guys lived like thousands of years before, you know? Yeah. You actually see it. It's like it just confirms a whole lot of things in you. You know? Absolutely. And, you and Peter answered and said to Yahweh, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Right? So, you know, Peter in, in natural form, he's thinking to himself, okay, this is a, obviously a miraculous event. Let's make some kind of memorial. Because why? Same thing our forefathers did. Right, you know, it comes to mind right now. At least one in particular is uh, I'm thinking about when uh, Jacob, and when Jacob had the dream, and yeah. he saw the ladder, as they call the Jacob's ladder, mm -hmm. and the Alahine going up and down. And he said he made a memorial there after witnessing that in that in that place, right? 
So Peter in natural form is thinking, okay, we'll probably do the same thing here since this is happening. And obviously for some reason. It says in verse 6, for he wist not what to say, for they were so afraid. Right? Because you don't know what, what's, what's going on here. They're talking and they manifest themselves in their spirit forms. And, you know, while you feel privileged at the same time, it's a terrible sight to behold. And you almost feel like, I, even, I you know, should I even belong here? Am I even worthy? You're looking at this. It says in verse 7, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Now you hear a voice out of nowhere. Now we know whose voice obviously this is. Uh -huh. and not only are you seeing Moses and Elijah, now you, now, now you hear the most high's voice. Wow. And we talk about uh, seeking a sign. <laughs> right? And these, these brothers didn't seek a sign. They, they saw Christ as a sign, right? But look at these signs they're giving. Look at the signs they're given by what? Seeing something like this and then getting okay. getting to hear the most size voice. Come on, brother. Think I recognize you, huh? You got your glasses on. Come on, brother. Show them why. Yeah. I haven't made it service. You have to be so loud. Oh, I miss it. Okay. Yeah. So it says there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. So yeah, they're getting all the signs that, you know, the carnal man would have said, yeah, show me a sign. But this would have been wasted on them, would have like been like casting pearls before swine, right? Non-believers. But now they get to see this, right? Because they believe Christ just because. Because they acknowledge based on the word that he is right. the son of man, that he is the Messiah. It says in verse 8, and suddenly when they looked around about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus or Yahweh Shah, only with themselves. Where you at, brother? Uh, Mark chapter 9 and verse 9. Okay. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen, till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. So he said, don't say anything until I die and rise up again. So he's bringing it up again. He's, he's going to bring it up many more times. As he's done for them and the other disciples. I must die, but in three days I will rise up. So he's saying it more than once, right? Like the most high tells things more than once. Because it still wasn't settling in just yet. So you have to make sure you reinforce it. That when it happened, they can go back and say, see, you're amazed by this, right? But remember, I told you this had to happen. I told you once, I told you twice. So to link up with, uh, yeah, see, in verse 10, check this out. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another, what the rising from the dead should mean. So we're here is making it very clear. They still are trying to make sense of what he means by this. Rising from the dead, who, how, him, what way, how's it going to go down, what's, what's, how's it going to take place? Really, he'll rise from the grave? Or even Lazarus hadn't happened yet, so it's like, okay, I, I hear him, but... Sometimes I guess seeing is believing. But they so they just finished seeing Moses. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like they still didn't get it. Rising from the dead, they just saw him. Mm -hmm. So Moses was dead. Mm -hmm. But they just saw Moses right there with them with Yahweh. Still they didn't get it. Right. You had me thinking about now when um back in Matthew when uh what was it? They were uh when Christ brought up you know i think they asked him a question about if a a woman was a widow like seven times each man died right and then she died also in the resurrection i think it was that situation he was like who would she have been married to she, she was married to all of them right in the resurrection and he was like they're neither married or given in marriage in, the, in the heaven so like the angels mm -hmm. then he's like he say i am the god of abraham isaac and jacob a guy's not a god of the dead but of the living he said it like, he quoted the scripture from Exodus where Moses I told Moses, I am the God of Abraham, like present tense. Mm -hmm. In other words, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob never died. Right? They lived on. They, uh, as we were saying earlier, they went to sleep. They went to sleep. Because they died in righteousness. Right. Right. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm only saying that just to say like, he, he had to bring that up for even the Pharisees too. Cause they even they didn't understand the whole thing about the rising from the dead and how that works and right. you know how the whole thing means. Let alone the disciples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so coming back with um with the woman marrying all these men, right? Mm -hmm. And they're in the heaven. They live like angels. So like a Christianity say, oh, we're all gonna die and just live like angels. Okay, you know. Oh, at one time. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're all gonna just die and live like angels. We're not gonna, we, we're not gonna be on the earth, the earth anymore. You're gonna pass away, you're gonna go on. Right. We're, gonna be, we're just gonna live in the spirit world like, mm -hmm. like angels. Right. right. You see, even with the Pharisees, they understood about the resurrection that would come at the end. They already knew about the regeneration. They knew about the, the resurrection at the end. Remember the Old Testament we talked about it. They were just at odds about if Christ was gonna be the one to usher that in. You know, if he was gonna play that role. So, yeah, it's a. Uh, a lot of haze around this whole dying and being reborn. But like you said, uh, it's, it's kind of kind of funny. It's like, okay, you just saw them. But you know what, Israel, it's like, in one or out the other, you know? But we say, really? Can, can that happen? That's something crucial to the point where they were, they were like, so me, they didn't know what to think. Like, oh, but still, they asked, you know, how <laughs> he's just a Moses. <laughs> and he was, he was, quote unquote dead and you just saw him you, you should have been there with them like you should have bumped james like yo and say, say what you just said <laughs> maybe they would have got it <laughs> uh, maybe you were maybe you were james I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> maybe you were peter because <laughs> let's uh let's continue on but yeah I, I, I'm going to keep silent on this because I kick myself because I know I, like I was talking about in the last half, seeing the truth in middle school and then seeing it in high school, but then not until seeing it a, a third time in college, I really know what I was looking at or what I was hearing. Oh, the Bible. I got kicked myself. It, it was in different ways. One time it was a television program, another time it was a, a hip hop song, mm. and then the third time it was the brother telling me. No, who? A brother just told me. Oh. But, all kind of different ways. but looking back on those mm -hmm. previous times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard it. And I remember just like spending extra time just looking at it. Like it was just something I just kind of glanced at and looked away. It was something I glanced at, but then I kind of did a double back and was like, maybe a couple seconds and then, okay. And it's like went back to doing whatever I was doing. And looking back, I remember like, yeah, hey, I was trying to see it, but most times like, mm -mm, not yet. So it's like, Again. Yeah, so it's like I can relate to a certain extent with this, where it's like mm -hmm. it's couldn't, it just couldn't put it together for some reason, you know. When that time, that's all. You know, yeah, when it's when one of those time things. This is one of those things, and I think it's um, it's humbling in the end because the lesson I think that we should all be reminded is is that as the scriptures tell us, the Most High, He's the one that opens up minds and closes minds. Yeah. He's the one that makes you blind, makes you deaf, mm -hmm. makes you uh not understand. He's mm -hmm. also the one that opens your mind. When it's time for your mind to open, you know. Thought my wife. That's your name. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, even me before, like way before I came into the truth. I don't want to say how many years, but way before I like see, but like I didn't see. Mm -hmm. You see, but you don't see. Mm -hmm. You hear, but you don't, you know. Until the most I wake you up. Mm. 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 And it's a beautiful awakening. Absolutely. So, so let's get the uh, a link to this. So for this whole section from two all the way down to two all the way down to nine. Transfiguration. You can the section we just read from Mark nine, two to nine. Mark two to nine. Verse yeah. two to verse nine. In chapter nine, nine. nine. exactly. Chapter nine. Mark. Okay, Mark, I got you. You want to link these verses? Well, I ain't gonna be in here. Yeah. No, no, just write them. Write, write the verses. We're not gonna get them. Just write the verses in your notes. And then when I can get here, it's just um, some. Hear me. 
So write down Matthew chapter 17. Amen. I'm gonna repeat them. Verses one to nine. And then also below in Matthew 17, one to nine, write down Luke chapter nine. Matthew 17. Verse one to nine. You said seventeen? Yes. Okay, what? One to nine. Right. Yeah. Nine. Twenty-eight to thirty-six. Twenty-eight to thirty-six. Twenty-eight to thirty-six. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice jacket. And then you could also twenty fifth, right? What's the day's day? Twenty fifth. Twenty seven. Twenty seven, yeah. Wait, the day the twenty sixth? Twenty seventh. And then you could also write down uh with it Mark 9 10. Uh, Mark 11. Chapter. Mark 9 11. I can't go to 9 11, but 9 10. That's the next verse, right? Mark got his book 9 and 10, and then 10, 11, and 12, right on the way. So also write down Mark 9 and 10. Write down these verses too. Exodus 24 and 18. 24 and 18. Also, Exodus 34 and 28. Exodus 24 and 38. 34 and 28. 34 and 28. Mm -hmm. okay. And also, 1 Kings 19 and 8. And then one more, Matthew, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 2. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 2. Right. And all those just showing uh, places where Moses, Elijah, and Christ, that they all fasted 40 days and nights. And that's where all, all the time where they were that fasted. Yeah, 40 days and nights here. 40 days and nights. Okay. That's, that's interesting that they, they, they share that in common. Okay. And that they both were there. Okay. Were they were together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we, we can go on. This is uh, Mark chapter 9 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says, and they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must first come? Because mm -hmm. it's a prophecy in uh in Malachi that what? Elias or Elijah should come came in, in the last times, right? Because mm -hmm. Elias is the way it's spelled, the same way it's spelled Elijah. Just in the New Testament, you'll see it spelled Elias. Okay. In the New Testament, you see it spelled Elias. Right. But it's but the don't same. Be Elijah. Right. And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first and restore up all things. And how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. Right? So acknowledging the prophecy concerning him and concerning the. Huh? Naught. Naught. No, you Uh. Is this another word? Said it not. We see that. I think it means not. Yeah, that's me, what I mean. I think, I think it's just the old I think it's the old English for not, but let me yeah. uh oh, let, me, let me confirm. Let me look it up. Where do you see that word? The last uh, word in that verse. Last word in the verse um, twelve. Twelve. Yeah, like, that means like not. Like you were here, now you're not. Now you're not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that just is a, a summer word that they, they use put back then. Use then, okay. Yeah. Right. So let's let's look it up though. That's that's what we do. If we don't know, if we're not sure, we look it up. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with looking up words. Let's see. I have a question back here, sir. Are you looking for? Okay. Here you go. 
N O U G. What happened is like the transfiguration mm -hmm. was so big, but yet in our mind, the way we forget them, we quickly forget them. Quickly forget. That's why the Mosa said remember, always say remember. Because mm -hmm. we forget fast, quick fast, right? Right. So when when, when they saw Elijah and Moses, the first thing that comes to mind is that, oh men, let's build three tabernacles. You know tabernacle is something small. Mm -hmm. Right? Tabernacle is like a uh, tent. Right. Right? Where they were. But they, they, they see Yahusha in the lonely state. Mm -hmm. Right? But Yahusha was trying to show him that in the lonely state that you see me now, when I come back, you're going to see me in my glory. In, my glory I'm, in that low state, don't get caught up in that low state that you see now. Okay. That's why in that low state, they, they weren't seeing things like with a big big practice. Oh. They right. see him, they see how we shot. They see him in a lower state. They see him in a low state, in a, in a, in a low state. But the picture that he was trying to yeah. show him that even though you see me now right. in a lowly state, right? Right? But when I come back in you my glory, I'm this is how you are going to see me. Right. So they miss that Yahushua. How big it is standing in there for the, the one that is bigger than Moses and Elijah is right there with them. Okay. But they could not see it. They couldn't see it. Right. Okay. So he was trying to give them a bigger picture mm -hmm. of how they would be. They would even though they might be suffering you know problem right now, right? right people see him and ridicule him, right? But yet when he appears in his glory, they have a chance if they continue walking, right, in the in the truth. They right. will be in that situation, but right. they see themselves in a low state. Still, oh. they can get it. Right. That's good. And so, uh, I looked up a uh, not. It led me to another spelling: N A U G G H T. Not. You can spell it both ways. Right. But it says it means one nothing. <laughs> two cipher zero, the figure zero. And it says. Rare, worthless, of no value. So nothing. Good nothing. Can I make a picture? Keep it simple. Colossians three and four. Oh, this is going back with them. Um, they didn't uh, know what he meant. They questioned themselves. Right. So link that with verse ten. Right. Okay. What happened is just because we used to. Tabernacles, mm -hmm. we think this is our, you know, we always gonna be in tabernacles. We, we couldn't see past that. Okay. Past okay. The right. The right. So the temple. tabernacle is something temporary. Temporary, right. Right. And that was back then, right? Fun. So whatever we used to now, we should not let our mind be captive to it if we go now we shouldn't let our mind be captive thinking that we, we, we that's what that's what we do that's what that's our state that's what we should be right right we gotta look way beyond that and that's what tribes are trying to oh that's what we're trying to explain to them give them some kind of explanation right open okay. their mind up so they can see the bigger picture oh okay yeah man just going through it day in and day out with family and friends and you know they say a uh, state of mind, American state of mind. That's all you got. It's like back then was the they had the Romans, yeah, they tell them what to do. You can only go with this far, do what's gonna go with so far, you know. Like you say, put yourself in a, in a box. Like seeing ourselves where we are now, right? But the bigger, way bigger thing. You don't see right. yourself being a like ruling and be like a, you know, in a in a big place and you know, and where you decked out with gold. <laughs> I bet you right now, sitting in this room right now, you don't see yourself in that in, in that light. Right. But that's exactly what Yahushua was trying to show them. Oh, okay. That's what they all did. Right. If you continue walking in the faith, one day you're gonna be with us just like that. You right. see how you see that glory here? You see Moses right. and you see Elijah. I right. appear in glory. You're gonna be just like that. Up there, just like that. Just like Stop that. seeing that little tabernacle. Oh, okay. You say, oh man, maybe we should build some tabernacle right here. Nah. He was trying to show him the big picture. Okay. It says, um, Colossians 3 and 4. Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Colossians. 
That's why when we keep thinking ourselves as being slaves here, mm -hmm. and we think that's where we belong, that's we shoot ourselves in the head. Yeah. But they've been brainwashing us all this time. Yeah. Really nothing. Now we let them brainwash, right? Uh, Nobody can brainwash you without them. You open up yourself and believe what they say. You put your mind into it. Right. They they say. Even though the tactic might be might be might be huge what they use, but still you have a decision. Right. The decision is that you 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 know you 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 pray to the most high, mm -hmm. and right to alleviate the what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Or if you have to die, you have to stand for what you need. Mm -hmm. Colossians three and four. Right. <clears throat> When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mm. Hey, right. Explain, explain, explain. When himself. Christ, yeah, explain itself. I don't even need to say anything. Else. Right. Right. Yeah, in Christ. But they didn't see that Christ was right here with them. Mm -hmm. Walking with them every day. Walking with them. Same trials and tribulations. Trying to with them every day, but they see him in the lowly state. Like he in ridicule, mm -hmm. people trying to get him, even all he's trying to do. They see, they don't see him in, 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 in um, clothing with where kings mm -hmm. is at. So okay. they see him as he is. Low state. Low state. Who is that They come from. Verse 10. There you go, 9, 10. Right. Mark 9, 10. Kind of good stuff. So, um, not means nothing or without value. Bring it back to uh, verse 12. I'll read verse 12 again and read 13. Mark chapter 9 and verse 12, it says, He answered and told them, He lies verily cometh first and restore all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be said at naught? Or it cannot be, right? In other words, you know, put to death. 13. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto whatsoever they listed, it is as it is written of him. Mm -hmm. Right? So they were still questioning about who who that Elias was that was to come. Right. Right? So they were they were hazy on that one too. And then you read this, and you can link this, link uh Chapter 9, verse 11 to 13. Make it with Matthew 17, 10 to 13. Once again, Mark 9, 11 to 13. Mark 9, Link it with Matthew 17. Mark 9, 11 to 13. Link it with Matthew 17, verses 10 to 13. Where they have the same conversation. And Christ is the same thing. But there in Matthew, it says that they understood that if Christ said that, that they were talking about, that he was talking about John the Baptist. Okay, you say, link 10 to 13 in Mark. Uh oh. So Mark chapter 9, 11 to 13, mm -hmm. links with Matthew 17. 10 to 13. I said, when you read it in Matthew, it's the same conversation. But there's an added detail in Matthew where it lets you know the disciples understood that he was talking about John the Baptist. And again, what? what do you have written down? I just got uh, Mark. You said late Mark from. Uh, 12 to 13, right? Mm. 10 to 13. No, 11 to 13. Oh, 11. Which, which chapter do you have? Mark. Mark what? Okay. Okay. It be Matthew, right? No, Mark. I'm asking which chapter do you have written down from, from, from Mark? Hold it. Hold it. It's, it's Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. Before he even has the verse, he needs the verse we're linking it with. He got Mark. You know what verse we're trying to link it with? He got Mark chapter 9, 11 to 13. Yeah, exactly. Now, you, you had that written down, right? That, yeah. Now Good. Link that up with Matthew. Matthew what? 10 to 17. No, 17. 
Oh, Matthew 17. Verse 10 to 13. Oh, okay, I got you. Just keep that pattern. Despite the, uh, the, the verse. 10 to 13. 10 to 13. Oh, Matthew 17. Verse 10 to 13. I got you. All right, so let's, let's move on. So reading on in uh, verse 14, this is a, a long section here, but either way, we'll go into it, and then I'll just give the links from the, uh, the other Gospels you can read. We had the same story about the, the family who had a child that had a, a dumb spirit, or that he was lunatic, and it says that he oftentimes fell into the fire and fell into the water. I'm going to read it. I'm just kind of summarizing. Where you at? Oh, yeah. Mark chapter 9 and verse uh, 14. Mm-hmm. About the uh, the people who have a, a child, once again, they had a dumb spirit. And you read another gospel says he was lunatic. They say he oftentimes fell in the fire and fell in the water, and that this unclean spirit would tear at the child, like having like tear at himself, right? So it says, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them. Mm-hmm. And the scribes questioning with them, and mm-hmm. straightway, all the people when they beheld him were greatly amazed, and running to salute, him, running to him, saluted him. Mm-hmm. When they saw him, they said, "Oh wow, it's him! Maybe he can do something about this, right?" And he asked the scribes, "What question ye with them?" Mm-hmm. And one of the multitude answered and said, "Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit, right?" So you see dumb just means uh, doesn't mean when we hear say the word dumb, you think, oh so and so's a dummy, right? Right? They they're not smart. But really just dumb just means you can't talk. Oh, okay. That's what it means. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Stop, man. <laughs> so me. but usually how we use it now, we'll say, Hey you dummy, right? All right. All right. Yeah. What about you on Thank you. <laughs> Actually, uh, 18. No, you were 18. Oh, uh, 18? Okay, all right. No, that wow. was the dumb ass I just gave them, right? <laughs> No. <laughs> just, 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 just incorrect. That's all. We all get lost. Right. That's it. So that's why some people might call me dumb for saying that. No, you but, d- but, but dumb ass just means you can't speak. We all. I didn't know what you were know, saying how they use it incorrectly. Right. Mm-hmm. Let me say something. Every one of us all make mistakes. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we don't criticize nobody. Yeah, you got right. Well, you can judge, we just can't condemn. But judging is how we learn. Mm-hmm. So it says in verse 18, wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. Mm-hmm. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered them and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Mm. How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> Christ, get, get none of the disciples, like, <laughs> right? Oh, faithless generation, like you were talking about earlier with the choir, right? He said, what's going on with you, with, with, my, with my people, my disciples? Oh, okay. Where is your faith at, right? So he's going to, you know, come and save the day, but he's going to teach them something, too, in the process. Like, this is why you can't, you can't deal with this here. It's the same reason why you can't understand what I was telling you before. It's all connected. And it's like it's a feed. Most I feed them every now and then. Yeah. You see, I guess as soon as he feeds Peter, Peter was all excited. Mm-hmm. You know, for a few minutes when he saw Moses and you know, you know, like excited. Imagine when we're gonna have the house out forever. We couldn't we would not be able to contain ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, imagine for that. A second, you said, oh, I had it. This guy didn't know what to say then. That was good right there, man. Right. Be there. So maybe we should be three times now. You're for you. Went for more this, you know. Excitement. Mm-hmm. Excitement. Yeah. I could see him sitting on the uh, on the porch by the temple. I guess what, what was before Solomon's porch, now Howard Shah's porch, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it being like late at night in the kingdom, time mm-hmm. to go to sleep. But we're still at the at his at his porch asking questions. <laughs> and he's like, right. It's time, don't worry, I'll tell you guys everything. It's, it's okay, just rest up. We'll pick it back up in the morning. You know, be going the same but he will be the there at his at his at his uh, at the porch, like, yeah, what about this? What about that? What about? <laughs> so, we, so we're gonna be 
by the answering question. Right. Oh, there's, there's gonna be more to learn in the kingdom. The, 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 the law is gonna be written on the inward parts, but we're gonna right. learn the depths of the law, oh, okay. how it connects to other things and deeper things that we just didn't see before. Okay. Cause that's the beautiful thing about the law. It's kind of like I always like to make the metaphor, and then we'll, we'll continue. But it's like, uh, and you have seven colors. Yeah. Seven colors in a rainbow, but mm -hmm. you know, by mixing those colors again, you can give rise to endless. How the colors, right? Everybody made different colors. Right. Just like with music, you got seven, seven, well, seven notes, twelve notes, depending on what kind of scale. Mm -hmm. But those seven to twelve notes, you can create endless compositions. Okay. But our law is like, it's a finite number of laws, over six hundred laws, right? Give or take. But with that mm -hmm. finite number of laws, there's infinite wisdom that can be drawn from it. Mm -hmm. and what that actually means, the depths of that, we're going to learn that and continue to learn that in the kingdom. In the kingdom. How deep so this law goes. So but it's written, but as far as that, it has to be shown to us. Like, you can see how this law connected with this law this way. Mm -hmm. Or this law, when read with this law, can deal with this. You're like, oh, wow. It's like you've been looking at it the whole time, but you just didn't see it. Okay. Like we we're talking about this whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even too, when you know, we, we came out of, you know, for the Passover, we came out of Eve, you know, we did the Passover. And we we actually experienced for the most that passed over us, you know, and played the Egyptians, and we experienced that, and we understood that right. so much. There you go. And then we came out of that, and then we and then we we dwell in tents, you know, where we understand. And, and, and once we get in tune with farm and seasons and so on and so forth, then we're gonna like understand it more. Are we in this season? Does this grow? Right. When we get close to growing crops. Right. And dealing with animals. The creation. We, you know, are we dealing with the crops and the in gathering and so on and so forth? We start to do all those things that we understand it more as opposed to just being, you know, we all like living in the projects or in a certain way. Are we not close to the source of food? Mm -hmm. So things grow and the season and everything. Right. And now the air is coming in, you know, it's right. budding and so on and so forth. Then we start to get closer to that. Absolutely. So we understand it more. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We'll understand the depths of what the creation actually is. Mm -hmm. Ourselves within that. Come. Yeah. So, reading on in uh, Mark chapter 9. Mm -hmm. So, bringing him to Christ, it says in verse 20, and they brought him unto him. Mm -hmm. and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. He mm -hmm. fell on the ground and wild foaming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, us as men and women on the earth, our, our nation, the heathen, they all really know what, what, the, what the real deal is. But the spirits, they know what's they know what's really going on. They know who's who. So mm -hmm. when they seen Christ, they already knew his authority in the heavens. Mm -hmm. That's why unclean spirits always act different when Christ comes on the scene. Like, oh, are you gonna you gonna do something to us? They know he's high up when there's no one higher than the most high than him. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the spirits on the right and left hand. So when they see him, they know who he is. That's why he'll he'll tell them to say, Don't say who I am. Let, let them believe on my on, on their own. Mm -hmm. He'll check the unclean spirits that own people say, don't don't spread it out that, that I'm the Christ. Let them read it and believe it that way. They all they all know who he is. Mm -hmm. It's like a world within the world. Right? Mm -hmm. The unclean spirits and the, the righteous spirits, they 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 have a deeper understanding of why all this is happening than, than we do. They know who he is. It says in 21. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? Mm -hmm. He said, of a child. He's been tormented by this, uh, this unclean spirit since he was a little kid. Mm. It says in 22, and oft times it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Mm -hmm. So he's dealing with all types of elements, right? Whether it be drowning or burning. Burn. But yet yeah, he's, he's still here. <laughs> So an unclean spirit can do that, right? Where it can have you go through those things, but still preserve you. So this is uh, quite a spirit that he's dealing with. Mm -hmm. Unclean spirit needs, he's looking for that body to go in. Mm -hmm. no, okay. Right. Okay. Sometimes even some of our people dealing with these crazy drugs, that is that they, 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 they just like, not themselves, you know? And that's the unclean spirit, unclean spirit trying to jump into. Yeah. Is there, like when, when you're other than yourself, you know, that's something to you, having you doing different things. 
even when you are in a normal state, but it makes it easier when you're in an altered state of consciousness. Yeah. Okay. By by whatever means, whether okay. it's uh, like yeah, you said, even you, you, in your conscious state, you can do it too. If you don't but, understand the commandments, something can happen. You can respond a certain way that's wicked. That can let, let an unclean spirit come in okay. and ride and ride, you know, ride you out. Mm -hmm. Just like with the altered states of consciousness, whether it's you know drugs today or you know certain types of herbs, you know, you have like a uh, gag messing with the peyote, you know, you know breathe it in and you know, call upon the, the hawk guy and this and that and the third. And, you, know, you open yourself up now to anything that come in your house. And, and, and the drugs that some of the people that take it, mm -hmm. they, they just like out of themselves. Mm -hmm. They really sad. Well, come. Uh, basically, when they really, the unclean spirit really gets you when you're in your Lord's state. Uh, the scriptures use a metaphor of um, a frog. You see it like it says frogs in Revelation. And then it tells you in, in the Gospels. The walk in dry place, dry places, the unclean spirit, seeking rest and finding none. It's like a frog out of the pond. He can hang out outside of the pond for a little bit, but eventually he's like, eh, I want to go back to the pond, get, yeah, get, get, get wet again, you know? Mm -hmm. so that's like how we are as far as our vessel, this body. Mm -hmm. They can go out there and, do, you know, go to and fro, but they want to come back into that body. But let's read on. It says, an off time, oh, I read that. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Once again, bringing it back to no need for signs and wonders. Just know that I am and that I, I am the word. And if you believe on the word, all things can be. Okay? Blessed are those that have not seen yet still believe. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, he believe. Right? So... You know, you've been dealing with this for years. Your, your, your child having this issue, right? Imagine the, the wear and tear on his family, let alone him, you know? All these years. So that the wit sense. So it's like, Christ, please deliver us. Save our son. When Yahweh saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Right? So... <laughs> He checked the spirit. It says in 26, and the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. He had to get one last rent in, you know. Ah! It says he came out. It says, and he was as one dead, in so much that many said he is dead. So at first they thought, oh my God, once the spirit left, it's like he's just lying. But what happened? But Yahweh took him. By the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately. So before I read that part, so Christ rose him up. I think it tells you another place. Uh, well, anytime you read the when Christ deal with people with possessions, other other examples, we'll get that later on. That they get they come back to their normal mind after the unclean spirit comes out, right? They hijack it. And he's going to explain to them that this. Uh, this last part, why they couldn't take him out. It says, I'll read 28 again. When he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? So like a consultation, you know, after you right. go out there and do a, a presentation or something. And they know. After the people leave, you, you say, OK, how do we do? We didn't do so good. How come, how come we couldn't do it? You know, what, what's going on? He said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing. But by prayer and fasting. Yeah. So that goes into why prayer as well as fasting are, you know, good for us to do, you know, generally as a, as a good general practice. This is one of those things that uh, draws us closer to the power, the higher power, to where in our understanding, when we pray and fast and over, uh, overcome different trials, tribulations, it draws us close to the most high and increases our faith. It, de it develops our character all around. It develops our faith, our patience, our experience, our meekness, right? Our godliness, our peace, our joy, all the fruits of the spirit you can think of. Everything we go through is supposed to develop those. If we process what we go through the right way. And that's not always easy. Process what we go through the right way so that we grow more fruitful. Like we're talking about last chapter, men being like trees. 
Mm -hmm. We want all our fruits to grow and become come into full maturity. Mm -hmm. So we can come more on a level of Christ as far as our character development. Right. We can become better people. Uh, also, when y'all shot them down, right? And store them, you know, arguing and then doing that miracle. Right. So it's like it's a lesson because when they asked Yahushai, why couldn't we get them down? He said, you know, this one you cannot guess like that, you know, it's because of your unbelief. Unbelief in him. Okay. And at the same time, proving to them that they cannot do anything without Christ. Right. Kind of excellent point. So link this with uh, chapter 9, 14, we stopped at 29, right? Yeah. That's this this whole section dealing with the uh the unclean spirit. You can just write down these uh this is where it's at in the other gospels. It's in Matthew. Matthew 17 verses 14 down to 21. Once again, Matthew 17 chapter verses 14 to 21. Also Mm -hmm. 14 and 21, right? Yeah. Also, it's in Luke chapter 9, 37 to 42. Perfect. All right, so let's continue on to verse 30. Also, based on what I just said, one scripture. Okay. John 15 and 5. Showing that we cannot do anything without Christ. If the most our bless us with some with a blessing, mm -hmm. and then we start performing that blessing, and then we start showing off, then we're gonna come with a with a roadblock. Because once we start getting into our head. That is our blessing, then we just doing it. Right. That's when everything messed up. Right by that in it. Okay. So let's uh, link that with nine and what, 30, 23? Yeah. All things 15, are possible. 15 and 5. 15 and 5. Oh, John. Fine. Right, I'm calling. I'm trying to find the link. 15 and 5. Right. We, we, so we forever depending on the most high. And you know, mankind, the physical, don't like to depend on anybody. Mm -hmm. Including Christ when he was walking in the physical. Okay. You know what I mean? That just because the man is walking just like you, you feel like if he can do something, you can do it too. Right. Right? Not not respecting this is your house. Right. Not knowing who he is. Right. And <laughs> you got the right idea. Now, how do you get there? Do you know the way? Yeah, you should be doing what I'm doing right now. I gave you a chance to do it. This is verse 30. It says, And they departed thence and passed through Galilee, mm -hmm. and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying, and were afraid to ask him. So, I think this is like the second time we've seen this in today's service, right? Where he's talking to him about this. He's gonna, he's gonna mention it again. He, gonna, he told them that was gonna happen to him. And you see with the disciples, even when we get down to the crucifixion and when he rose, it was still like mm -hmm. it was still like a, a certain disciples were like, huh? What? You came back? Is you? You supposed to like they he kept throughout the throughout his ministry, he kept telling them over and over again. They weren't paying attention. They weren't paying attention. They were lost. No, here it actually says they would, but they were afraid to be like, uh, how was shot? Can you can you explain this to me? So they were afraid to ask. They heard what he said, but like they just they just couldn't understand. Oh, okay. You know, sometimes when certain teachers like they may bel belittle you or berate you and you don't know. So it's like, you know, I don't want to ask so and so. I asked them, he's gonna be like, you idiot, you fool, you. <laughs> yeah. Let me let, let me not even ask songs. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you figure you're asking too much. Asking too much, so you figure you're gonna literally, so you won't wanna ask him. 
Right. But even with Christ, we know he's not going to just utterly just cast them out. Mm -hmm. But he's already got in, got in them, got in on them a couple of times already. Like, don't you guys know this? Where's your faith? You know, mm -hmm. don't you see this? Don't you see what I'm trying to tell you? It's like, okay, let's, let's not ask anymore, you know, <laughs> even though we still can't see it. Like, you know, you have the tools already, you know, look inside and understand it. Oh, yeah, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, to make a cake and everything, you you know, you have all the ingredients and that. Oh, yeah, I should use this. Or, like, I teach, teach it mm -hmm. karate, you know, teaching patience and all of this stuff. And I was like, why can't I go? Why have to go on and get a pail of water, you know? Right. And he's like, teaching him this and that and that and that. And he's learning all of that stuff. And then you understand later on, so, oh, yes. It's, you know, a lot of the, a lot of this stuff is like, it's in us already, like, you know, that's the kingdom of heaven is within you. Mm -hmm. So if you really go inside and start to look and understand, you know, certain things are like, wow, we do have the ability to do these things, you know, like, you know, like what we, we don't have in our shy here. But it's giving us to understand it because the spirit bears with it, and the spirit is helping us do all of these things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So when Yahushai died and he left, the apostles were continuing doing the work and doing the miracles and all of this stuff. They they were doing it. Mm -hmm. Come. So you know, they, maybe some of the people are like, oh, he's leaving us now. It's like, wow, you know, or he he crucified on the cross and he died, and it's like, wow, you know, we're all sad and everything. Then right, you right, saw him right. and then, you know, rose from the dead and it's like, wow, great. He's with us, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he left. He was like, what, what are we going to do now? And then it's like, continue to work. Continue to work. Continue to work. He leaves this very day now. We are Acts 29. Can you get back on what you're saying? It's like, when you see somebody here, somebody you enjoy that person talk you. Right. You all right, all right. Let's say if that person say, "Man, you know, I'm gonna die." You don't want to believe it because you see, you don't want to believe it because you don't want to see that person departed from you, right? Because of the burning things you created, let alone your house shot, everything that he, he did, his discipline and things he created around the disciples and healing the sick and everything. You don't want to see somebody like that go away, right? You don't want to see somebody like that go away. So it's like the flesh, you know, we want that energy. So they, we don't want to believe that going away. Even though they saw Moses, Elijah out there, somehow, man, nah, we don't want you. What are you talking about? That's why Peter came. Nah, what are you talking about? Don't talk to him like that. Like, you're going to make us make him sad. You know how they believe in you and you tell them you're going to die. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So it's, all of that plays a part, too, in, um, in, the, in the human experience. Yeah. Absolutely. So link these verses, 30 to 32. Link these with Matthew 16. Matthew 16, in verse 21. Uh, link this with uh, Mark 9, 30 to 32. Okay. So Matthew 16 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, chapter 17, same Matt, Matthew also. Matthew 16, chapter 21, verse. Right. Mark, I'm sorry, uh, also Matthew 17, verse 22 to 23. Just say, when you, let me know when you have that. Matthew 17, 22 to 23. Right. And, and Luke chapter 9. Forty-three to forty-five. So in thirty-three, it says, and he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, "What was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way?" Thirty-three. Can we just uh, cut down the side conversation, Baba Kusha? Thank you. Verse thirty-three again. He came to Capernaum, 
and being in the house, he asked them, what was it they disputed among yourselves by the way? Mm. But they held their peace, for by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Mm -hmm. Right? So they're talking about who's going to be the greatest amongst all the disciples. Yeah, that, that, that's color people. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying black people, <laughs> but that's color people. Be <laughs> straight up. Think about your friend that you think he likes me more than you. Y'all, yeah. that's yeah. up. <laughs> who's, who's, who's master's favorite? Mm -hmm. 35. You guys can. Yeah, we gotta be all on the same side. Just keep, keep it down. Mm -hmm. But they held their peace, for by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve and said unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. Mm -hmm. so this is the famous servant leader model, right? To be the to come up high, you gotta come down low. You have to humble yourself, right? Mm -hmm. you come down to a, a, a lower state and give the most. See, so he who gives the most to his brother and sister, he shall gain the most. Right? So it's a, it's really a, a perfect model. We see even in the world, in corporate America, they've even uh, adopted this idea in certain circles, right? The servant leader model. But it comes from Christ, right? This whole idea of, you know, serving your constituency, serving your people that, that work under you. Even the title uh, of a politician, right? They call themselves public servants, right? Mm -hmm. right? That's what a minister is supposed to be, let alone a prime minister. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be a prime servant. Mm -hmm. So the title's right, but mm -hmm. what they do, and it's not always exactly that. They don't do what it's supposed to be. Not, no, maybe parts of it, yeah, other parts, no, not so much. Mm -hmm. so if anything, they actually, uh, a lot of times you'll see when, when corruption enters in, they then pimp the people. Mm -hmm. They pimp the congregation. They pimp the organization as opposed to help it, build it, grow it, encourage it, strengthen mm -hmm. it. You know, mm -hmm. but that's you know that's what we see today, and we've seen men too, as long as there's corruption. So yeah, that's what Christ is is conveying to them. So he's setting that model forward to say, look, that's what you do. And then Christ Himself, He leads by example. Mm -hmm. What more? Mm -hmm. Could a leader do than give himself for the organization, right? So that the organization may continue on. He gave him his own self. Right. What, what what greater sacrifice is that? Right. So I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to do, do it. it. Mm -hmm. And he did it. Here we are today because he or what he did. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot to consider there, but that's that's the idea. Then he uh, gives them a, a live example as you read down 36. Mm -hmm. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, receiveth me. Mm -hmm. Whosoever shall receive me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. Mm -hmm. So once again, he's going into it's not about me, it's about the Father. All I'm doing here, I'm leading you, I'm leading you back to the Father. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what we're worshiping in the end anyway. That's right? That's what it's always been about, going back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is why Samuel was so mad, right? Why didn't he the king, Lord? They had you. Most high in his long-term vision, he said, nah, it's okay. Because he knew what we had to go through as a nation, even leading up to his own son coming down. Okay. Before we would finally get that he's king above mm -hmm. all. We're, we're still in that process right now. We're at the tail end of it. But we're, we're, we have to figure that out now in these last generations before mm -hmm. Christ comes back. But yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of its own discussion. There's a lot to say on that, too. But you guys get the idea. Uh, links you can pull uh, with this as far as the least versus the greatest and mm -hmm. humbling yourselves as children. You can link this pretty much with uh, this whole section, 33 down to 37. Mm -hmm. You could link Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 4. Matthew 18, verses 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. Also, chapter 23 in verse 11. Chapter 23 in verse 11. We say Matthew. Mm -hmm. And Luke chapter 9. 46 to 48. 
chapter 9, verses 46 to 48. And then Psalms 131, the whole psalm. It's like three verses, but. 131? Yeah. That whole psalm. The chapter. It's not long, but it says a lot. Yeah, I mean 130. If you know what I mean. 131 psalm. Okay. Yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now verse 38, back in Mark 9, 38. It reads. John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us. And we forbade him because he followed not us. There's another important topic here, as we see coming up now, right? Where you see certain camps, right? They'll come out and they'll say, especially if they have a, a, a somewhat large following, a, a bigger church, mm -hmm. they'll say, Oh, if you're not under us, you're not under us, you don't have the truth. Oh, you got to be under our camp. Mm -hmm. Our camp. Or they won't say it like that. Sometimes they'll say it indirectly and say, look, you, you can do what you want, but we know. It's that, you know, we know where it's at with our group. Like you can say it different ways, right? But the idea is that you got two, five, 50, 100, 20, 200. Are you following Christ? Is Christ your leader? That's what's key. That's the key thing. Is Christ your leader? Are you, are you guys following Christ? Uh, That's what's important. Maybe last month, when your brother ran to me and we talking, I showed Kabar the uh, paper. They said that, you know, we were under, undermined. They feel that they would overtop us. Who was mm -hmm. that? The paper I showed you, remember Kabar? Right on. Remember when his wife came to school? Oh, that day? Right oh, that yeah, day. she's up there? Yeah. Trump showing his papers, talking about this other group saying, y'all ain't with him. Y'all ain't nobody. Uh, she wanted to say that to us, but she ain't even never been to class. She never been to class. Never been to class a day in her life. I love her, but we don't leave her that alone. Yeah. Need a flower alone. You come in here and want to talk something, some junk, but she don't want nothing. She ain't doing nothing. I mean, she, she took the papers. She had me bring the paper here, really. She I showed you the paper and she bought the paper. Did you want to create controversy? So let's, yeah. see how, let's see how Christ has handled this. Because it's, yeah, it's, it's the same situation. John answered, well, I should say it's similar. John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And he followed not us. And we forbade him because he followed not us. Meaning he's not with our group of disciples. Mm -hmm. But we see him using your name and casting out devils. So now, let's see what Christ said in response. 39. But Yahweh shall say, forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can speak evil. Um, exactly. For he that is not against us is on our part. Now, listen to everything that he's saying. He can't speak evil of me if he's doing a miracle in my name, if he's on our part, if he's not against us. So this isn't just saying any old body out there using Christ's name to cast out devils, because we know you got people that do that, mm -hmm. but are not following Christ. His brother was. This is different as opposed to someone who's just dealing with whatever and saying, yeah, Jesus, Jesus did this. According to the name of Jesus, blah, blah, blah. But they're, they're dealing with doctrines. That's different. It's going to someone who believes the same thing you believe, but this is another group, mm -hmm. another person doing those same works. However, that brother, sister came to the knowledge, most I showed them. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. They're not against us. Then they're on our part. They're actually helping. And you know, to, to get carnal, when you think about uh, warfare, especially when you talk about, uh, you know, you don't have as much, like when you're a smaller army, like you might have a, a militia as opposed to like a standing army when you're a small group mm -hmm. or a small nation state. You know, you say everybody gets a gun, men, women, children, you know, everybody that the defend the whole. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're in that kind of situation, you want to make sure that you have a, a, a mission statement, a purpose. It supersedes any leader at any given time. You may have a certain leader gets things going, but you want to have a thing in place where if one head's taken out, the thing can keep going. Oh, keep going. Right. So 
if it's just them and the 12 and that's it and everybody's under them if they get to the 12 they can shut the whole thing down with the way this move the way this movement works in righteousness mm -hmm. you could have brothers and sisters over here versus over here we may not met each other but the same spirit is moving mm -hmm. how do you start a movement like that right you could take out okay one branch here they may become corrupt but the movement keeps going because they keep doing the work over here doing the right thing. and they're doing the right thing over here too right so it's okay. like uncentralized so think about it in, in that wise too as far as people on a current level that understand you know combat and stuff they know that that's that's what's key mm -hmm. you want to have a system where if whoever's in charge gets compromised somehow some way gets captured gets discovered that the people next in line can fill his shoes everybody underneath them can come up and mm -hmm. the thing can keep going mm -hmm. right that's why even though america all their might you know military might they still lose against countries that have very, very less power because you can't stop the movement's ideology. You can't stop the the, the, the foundation, the, the principles that they stand on. You know? They fight for more than the only, only option you have is this scorched earth. And how's that going to work? How are you going to sell your idea of peace and democracy? You just burn everybody out. So they stick to their guns. They say, we want you out. And we're going we're gonna to pur purvey our way of life no matter what. You take out our leader, but another one will replace him or her. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep their rebellion going. Okay. But I'm just saying that you know people talk about that on the carnal level, but we see this with this movement on a spiritual level that Christ is the head of it. He's not even here. So how do you stop something like this? And don't think that the Most High needs you, right? Most High can take the spirit from us and give it to some brothers down the street. Right. So just you know. Be appreciative that you have the truth and make the most of it because you're in the truth now, you can be out the truth tomorrow. Oh, yeah, indeed. So just appreciate what you got. Yeah, and make the most of it. And do the best you can. Oh, uh, y'all can and then the quantum. Yeah, I just want to um, say this. First Corinthians 1 and 12. <clears throat> First Corinthians 1 and 12, it says, Now this I say, that every one of you said, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, and I of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? So, I know we have different camps. But even sometimes they come to us, what camp are you? What they time we say, like, mm -hmm. you know, who, who's our head? Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to ex exclusively say it's just not only them. I mean, the apostles didn't, didn't do that. They mm -hmm. saw the other groups. Right. And they, they kept on doing it by the person. But just like, yeah, just like what Yahweh Christ said, you know. It explains it all. Absolutely. What? Right. Just want to read um, um, Numbers eleven. In verse twenty-five to. I read it fast, too fast. Go ahead. Because this is a spirit that we have. Mm -hmm. We like to keep things for ourselves based on lack of faith and fear of losing something. Mm -hmm. right? We fear, and the most has never put the spirit of fear in us. We adopted it from the world. Okay. Like we want to keep something, we want to shelter it because of fear of lack that we might lose it. Right, I might lose it. I want to keep it. You know, this is mine. This is mine. I want to keep it for myself. You know? And if anybody tries to, we see anybody, you know, doing what we're doing, we feel like it's a threat. We're taking something away from us. Oh, okay. Right? Hmm. <laughs> and the same spirit happened back back then. Right? So it's a spirit. Mm -hmm. I'll start reading on verse 25. He says, And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him. Mm -hmm. Moses that is right mm -hmm. and took and took 
of the spirit that was upon him, mm -hmm. and gave it unto the seventy elders, right? Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease, right? They start speaking because now they got the spirit on them, right? Yeah. But there remaineth two of the men in the camp. The name of of the one was Eldad, and the name of the of the other was Melda. Mm -hmm. And the spirit rested upon them, mm -hmm. and they were of them that were written, mm -hmm. right? But went but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp, mm -hmm. right? And there went a young man and told Moses the same thing. They went and told Moses, mm -hmm. yo, 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 this guy, they, they, they set a cup, camp out there. <laughs> That's like when, when, we, when we started reading that, I, he reminded me when we were downtown and they said, man, you can teach it. Oh, yeah. You guys yeah, yeah. are, you know, you, you're not from us. You know, you guys are pastors. Yeah. Oh, okay. They, they try to chase us out where we were teaching out there in the street. Oh, okay. Right? It was like, that's a document, that's a document. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so we left. And it says, but we didn't, you know, we still teaching, right? Yeah, move on. Where were you at then? Downtown, um, 11 Market. Oh, same place. Same place. The guy came in, he said, in the, in the bishop or whatever. For the whatever, behalf of the bishop of Philadelphia. Bishop of Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I cannot teach you. Whoa. Yeah. For real? Yeah. People was, I cannot teach you. People were came down. You got to move. You got to move. You got to move. Yeah, we left. Yeah, yeah. We left. We left. We left. We, we, told, we went to 52nd Street that day. Yeah, because I mean, we're not there to fight our mothers. Right. We, we, we don't have understanding. Right. We just move the, on. The, the head of the camp made an executive decision because the people were watching. Mm -hmm. right. For their sake, we just rolled out. So we didn't want it to be like go back and forth. And, they look, and they're looking at us saying, oh, oh, that's what Israelites do. Right. So there was a wise decision by who was right. over the camp to say, right. look, right. Okay. for their sake, this is rolled out. We'll go teach at 52nd today. We were thinking about Christ, not right. our own ego. Right, not our own ego. If we're thinking about ourselves, we'd be like, nah, I ain't moving. We ain't moving nowhere. We're going to move me. We're going to move me. But that's not what it's about. You can't make us move. That's not what it's about. So exactly. if, if, if they touch us now, they're going to be like, nah, I'm moving. Right. But before <laughs> it gets to that, yeah. we, just, we just move. We just move. Right. That's right. what right. so it's smart. Like. We haven't seen them since. But y'all came back, though. Where's that lead? Yeah. Yeah. How long ago was this? If you don't mind me asking. Mid-2000s? Mid late 2000s? Yeah. A while, while ago. Right. The lead is in a whole lot of trouble. Right. I mean, I'm not even, see, even with that, I'm not even going to go and, and publicize them being in trouble. Let the most I deal with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm happy. I don't like that they're they in this situation, but they are in it. No, but they You know what I'm saying? They still are buzzed anyway, but they're wicked. Like Just quote uh, Gamaliel's counsel. Right. So in verse 27, it says, But there remain two of them. I read that already. Verse 27, it says, And there went a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Meldad do prophesy in the tent. <laughs> and Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, Forbid them, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envy is thou for my sake. Would God that all the Lord's people, all the Lord's people, prophets, in that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Nice. Nice response. Right? So 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 when we see that out there, it's not far fetched. That's all it's, it's in our spirit. We do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's heavy too, because someone like Joshua, like someone as great as he is, as far as our forefathers, you see, even he he was charged with folly, so to speak, because right. even he didn't really know the right thing in that situation, because he was still young. But Moses had a tongue. It's cool if they're, if they're doing it in the name of the Most High, let them be. Okay. There's no envy here. That shows um, Moses' meekness. Remember, he was known for his, his humility. Right. And you read the scriptures; it said, "No man on earth was as meek as him at that time." That's an excellent story. It ties right into what we're reading here, what Christ is telling his disciples. Excellent. So that's Numbers 11, uh, 25 to 29, to link with uh, Mark 9, 38 to 40. You would have got it with me. I like that. That's proper. So in the other, another gospel we can write down where the same scenario happens, where Christ says, 
he's not a us. He that's not against us is, is for us. You can write down a uh, Luke chapter nine, verses uh, forty nine and fifty. Forty nine and fifty. Mm -hmm. To link that too, but same situation, same uh, same thing. They're saying, "Oh, these guys are teaching, but they're not with us." Or well, they're casting out devils. They're not with our group, our immediate group. <laughs> verse 26 to what? Huh? What 26. Numbers 11, verse 26 to 29. Get that? Just ask him what the deal is. It's for your people. Number 11. So uh, let's continue on. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> he likes his back rest. Straight back. But you gotta use the bathroom. Oh, right. Yeah. Give me a light. Uh, let me show you where the light is. So let's continue on Mark chapter 9. Let's read uh, verse 41. 41. Right, so 9 and 41. So it says, Whosoever shall drink, shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name because ye belong to Christ. Verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. So if you're, long, if you're dealing with the same program, then you're good to go. If you're following the same operations, which is what? Christ, even if you're not with our media group, it's all good. You should not lose your reward. You shall gain your, you shall gain a reward too. Then it says in 42, and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better than that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. See that? So Christ is letting it be known then. Don't mess with them if they if they come with the same program. If they're teaching what we teach, leave them be. Encourage them. Mm -hmm. Right? Otherwise, these little ones that may not be as you know far along as you or what have you, it's like as if you're gonna take a millstone, tie it around your neck, and put you in the sea like that. Anvil, like you see, like uh, in those mob shows, you know. Yeah. They say you're gonna sleep at the bottom of the river. They put you, they tie you up, and they put that uh, that ball and chain to you. Right. Put you right down. That's pretty much what he's saying here. That's that's what should happen to you if you do that. So you can link those verses. Well, verse 42, really. You can link 9 and 42 with uh, Matthew 18 and verse 6. Once again, Matthew 18 and 6. So Matthew 18 and 6. That's funny. Who said we shall offend one of these little ones, right? Matthew 18 and 6. With timing, right? <laughs> little one came in. We're talking about little one. Matthew 18 and 6 says the same thing, same idea. Also, uh, Luke chapter 17 and verse 2. Luke 17 and 2. You link both of those with uh, Mark 9 and 42. Mm -hmm. you know? All hands on deck. The more hands, the better. Absolutely. Like Moses put it perfect. Are you envious for my sake? Like, what were you worried about? <laughs> Joshua, right? They're prophesying it's the Lord. Leave him be. I'll prophesy over here. Let him prophesy over there. Words coming out. It's all the matters. The most I know how to pick our leaders, you know? Most I know how to pick our leaders as far as oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Right. as far as uh, character, you know, qualities that they had, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, 43. Mm -hmm. So now it says, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. That's what we were talking about earlier, right? Last mm -hmm. chapter. I didn't want to get into it then because I knew we were going to read it now. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. So 
Instead of dealing with that second death, being cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, like I said, the revelation, right? Facing yeah. that destruction, being part of the two thirds, you're better off just being part of the one third and not having a hand, right? Now it says hand, we're going to see here is, is going to say, as you go down, a foot and an eye, but more or less it's the same idea, right? It's not so much literally talking about, oh, you got to cut off your hand if you got sticky fingers. No, it's the same. Whatever you got to do to stop a certain sin, if you know a certain, say, say it's drinking, for example. If you know if you have one, one cup, right. you, you black out, you wake up the next day, oh, what happened? And that's like the norm for you, not like a one-time thing, but the norm for you. Norm. Exactly. Be better off for you just to stick with juice, just stick with water. Holy. Don't don't even mess with it. Even though it's lawful, it's not expedient for you for your spirit because you know, once you touch it, you're gonna be grabbing hold of. You have trouble. Whereas another person, they can have a couple of drinks and then be good to go. But that's not an issue for them. They may have something else. That's like a vice for them. That's what we're reading here as we go down these three options, these three, three, three different things. And it's interesting too, I, this kind of stood out to me uh, the other day, reading through this. I think it's interesting the, the parts of the body they choose. Remember we were reading about um, in the Swordsman's Code about uh, reading someone's body language. Remember in Proverbs it says, he wink it with his eye, he speak it with his feet, he teach it with his fingers. They tend to focus on, like when you look at someone's body, those tend to be the three key areas that tell you the most, right? Someone's eyes or their face, someone's doing with their hands, and somebody's doing with their feet. I'm what not sure if there's, what's that? What is that? What is kind of like read, reading someone's bio language, like you're in the street, and you know, someone's talking to you, and they, they're doing like this, you know, they're nervous about something, right? Yeah. Or if they're talking to you, and all of a sudden you see their fist ball up, you're like, let me get defensive posture. <laughs> maybe trying to. Yeah, about to hit me. Yeah. Hit me now, huh? Right. Or you see somebody's foot tapping sometimes, you know? Yeah, or, or something, or nervousness again. Could be nervousness. But you get it, read all, you know, put all the things together. But this is part of judgment. Like mm -hmm. Solomon, our, our judges had to deal with this when we're dealing with people and their issues. We have to size them up, read body language, check out what the situation, check out the, the evidence, you know, mm -hmm. and weigh it according to wisdom. So that's what he was talking about when he said that in Proverbs. But like I said, I'm not saying there's a connection. I just think it's interesting that they use the hand, the foot, and the eye again. Okay. That's all. But anyway, verse 43, you can just link verse 43 with uh, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5 and verse 30. Matthew 5 and 30. Also... Matthew 18 and 8. Matthew 5 and 30, also 18 and 8. I'll read it again. If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. This is going to be destruction. 45, you, you know, death, pretty much. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for you to enter halt, to enter halt into life mm -hmm. than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire which never shall be quenched. So the same idea. I'm not saying let's literally cut off your foot. Right. But it's just saying, if you know you got something like a certain behavior, a certain idea, a certain something that you know you need to Remove from your peripheral. Do it. It's going to be something that you know is going to be a vice. Something's going to pull you in. Right. Try to remove it from you. Mm -hmm. I seen an article. There's an article years ago. I seen these hand might cut their hand off and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little cut their, cut their hand off from the wrist and stuff. Was they referring to that? Yeah. They did it literally cut we, we need more detail with that story, but <laughs> that's not the end of there. So well, verse 45. <laughs> come on, come on, brother. Why do you always do that? <laughs> it was part of the story. But think with verse 45. You also link Matthew 18 and 8. Now you got to ask other questions. Yeah. Were they religious? Was it, you know, was it, was it a Hamite custom? Was it something they did because of Christianity? Like, you know. Yeah, was it because of that verse or was it something else? Like, for example, 
the Philippines, but whenever don't don't like, switch. We're still asking about the first thing. Man. No, no, just that for example, like in the Philippines, man. I tried. I tried doing that. You know, the crucifixion, everything. They would go out there and try to get nailed to the cross. They pass out, and they use flagellation and a flag and stuff, and they beat themselves with the bloody and all of that stuff. So sometimes some heathen would take certain things and start to, you know, twi twist it up. You know. We, I agree. That we don't do. I agree. I think we all agree. But now the first story is that what they were doing. <laughs> that's all we're asking. Is that why they were doing that? Well, because of that verse, and cut your foot off. That's where they got that from. Or what? No, it's it's an article years ago. That, that's that, 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 that I read. And you can just remind me when you say that. There you go, the fact. That, that, I'll take that. Okay, I misunderstood everything. The world may never know. <laughs> So um, it says in verse 46, where their worm dieth not, mm -hmm. and the fire is not quenched. Verse 47, same idea. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye mm -hmm. than having two eyes to be cast into hell. Fire where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. It's almost like a, looks like a psalm, huh, Papa? I mean, y'all can the, 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 the meter looks kind of like a psalm with their repetition. So yeah, as far as your eye uh, offending thing, for verse 47, mm -hmm. you could link Matthew 5 and 29. Matthew chapter 5, verse 29. Mm -hmm. That's what we were saying before, like, if you know, looking at a certain thing or a certain somebody or, or a certain, a certain whatever it is, could be mm -hmm. somebody or something mm -hmm. that you know is going to tempt you, look the other way. Just remove it from your sight. That's why even... Paul said, abstain from all appearance of evil, right? He knows that uh, uh, evil is going to be all around you in this world. Yeah. But he said, abstain from all appearance of it. Because he knows, even though it's not wicked to look at something that's evil, he knows what it leads to. Because you look at it, you look at it long enough, you might go, hmm, what's going on over here? Get mm -hmm. yourself in trouble. Yeah, you might get trapped in and a good um, scripture you can read is Job, the thirty-first chapter. Job, Job, chapter 30, 31. So, what we Job would rather get punished for what you do now than waiting until your house shot comes in the second time. That was twenty-six and thirty-one. Right. If he does something now, he rather get punished right out of right here. Okay. Right? He feeds you whatever he does, you want to get punished right here. Because okay. you don't want to face your house out when he comes back. When he comes back when he okay. So if he does something, you want to get the punishment right there. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. So he, he made a covenant with his eyes that he would not look upon a, a, a woman with you know crazy ideas. Oh, okay. You made right. that he made that covenant with his eyes that like he would not look a woman, you know. He would look for you. Yeah, you would not look with ill, you know, you want to deal with deal with her or go laying with it. He said if he does something like that, he, he would rather his wife go and lay with somebody else so he can feel the pain right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, nice, yeah, that's no nice, you nice reading to tonight. I'm, I'm going to check that out tonight. Because you rather, you rather get punished now than wait for when the, hours, when the most I came to answer. You rather get punished right now. Uh, before, whatever calamity he's going through, you better, you better do it now because of something. That was Job. That's before I asked for all the help from the Father. That's after. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Remember, he said, why would he answer the most high when the most high comes? So you would rather get punished right now. Oh, okay. Because well, when you ain't got worms that's burning, he don't want to see him about that. He went through enough. Right. I, I got I to gotta read well, that chapter. Y all, y all, I, I, got, right some, then, I got yeah. something to read tonight. Let me check that out. That's good. Because right I was read, I read the first couple of verses. Of that I gotta read down. Good stuff. Whatever he does now, even if he has problem with his servant, he does something wrong. You wanna get punished? Okay. That's wisdom. And that's that's definitely that. wisdom. Because what do we always read uh, in Ecclesiastes? The sentence not executed against uh, evil it speedily. Is, it's set. Evil set in their hearts to do wicked. Mm -hmm. That's what people. That's what we do now, right? When we got the out of camp, yeah. you need to keep that Sabbath. You, know you shouldn't be eating pork. Man, I've been keeping the Sunday Sabbath all my life. My parents, my grandparents, were keeping the Sunday Sabbath 
all their life. My grand folks been eating pork all their life. Help clean the board of health. Mm -hmm. What you mean that pork is bad? It's gonna kill us. They, she's over 100 years old, still eating pork chop sandwiches or whatever it is, you know? <laughs> because it's not executed speedily. So what Job is saying, what he's quoting is, is, is on point. Mm -hmm. To say that the most I came, boom, just like that. But that's what makes this truth really typical because it doesn't happen. Whereas like if you got somebody over you, like the military, they'll be on you like, you know, flies on you know what. Yeah. But now with the most high, he'll give us time to yeah, willingly choose him. Mm -hmm. Without that fear of punishment for a while, and he might prick you a little bit, and then maybe he might <laughs> throw the hammer on you not kill you, but you know, throw the hammer down on you with some situation. Now you're like, Okay, I know why this is happening. I know why it's happening. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how it can be. Is a is a first Peter's 2 20 and 21, I think, talked about that as far as um, just going through trials versus going through things just because you are doing wrong. And you know, being able to recognize the difference. But yeah, to link with 47, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 29. Also, Matthew 18 and 9, to link with verse 47, as well as uh, Job 31st chapter. You say Matthew chapter. Uh, chapter 5 and verse 29. And link up both of those with uh, Mark 9, 47. Who was the second one? Eighteen and what? Eighteen and nine. It's an I offend me. Yeah, I like that, uh, Pukwai, and That's the live, live and direct. Job, Job's going to show you. Sometimes when we go into something better than what we do now. Right. Just not nearly there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Yeah. What does it uh, say about now? Babylon? His sin has reached up unto heaven. Mm -hmm. Most sides kept letting get away, get away, get away. We may say, "Oh, look at them! They're winning." Oh no, they're losing big time. You know why? Because they haven't been chastised like the way they need to be for all the stuff they've done. Oh, okay. So in their mind, it just builds their pride up more. Yeah, make them think they're you know, better. It's scary to be them right now. And you know what's up because mm -hmm. they it's more and more sin just they gotta they gotta pay that bill they gotta pay all those fines so to speak <laughs> right mm -hmm. they gotta pay up mm -hmm. mm. so yeah what we got left verse uh 49 mm -hmm. for everyone shall be salted with fire and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt you were mentioning that earlier right yeah. Is it? Don't drink blood, right? Don't eat fat. But then the law also says we're not supposed to, we're supposed to put uh, salt on our offer. So when it says everyone shall be salted with fire, that's what's uh, going into what makes us approved as a living sacrifice. So we see that alluded to in the Old Testament. I was making our bodies a living sacrifice, but it was even in Hosea where he said we render the calves of our lips. Right, we sacrifice what we do, what we say to others, and with that understanding, we then see the, the what do you call it, the spirituality behind why we offer the sacrifice without spot or blemish, but then also why we season the sacrifice, right? Because that's why in Colossians four and six, let your words always be with grace, seasoned with salt. See that? So that's the that's us now becoming that offering. That seasoned offering. Mm -hmm. uh, let me. I'll give the verses so you guys can write them down. And I see you. Don't forget. Let me just put these out here real quick. So with the uh, forty-nine and fifty, you could link uh, Leviticus. What's the scripture? Kahanyakana. Uh, Every offering should be seasoned. Is it Leviticus chapter two? Or is it chapter three? Help me out. Help me out, law man. Mm -hmm. Son of the right hand. What's that verse? Every offering shall be seasoned with salt. 
Na, maga? There we go, chapter 2. I knew it was in the front somewhere. Chapter 2. Leviticus chapter 2, verse 13. Okay. Team up. There you go. And then you could also link uh, Hosea 14 and 2. Which talks about rendering the calves of our lips. Take a few words. But pretty much, you know, it was talking about it back then, but what we do now, we go out and teach. Turn a sinner from the error of their way, right? Save a soul from death. All that. And then, of course, Romans 12 and 1. Offering our bodies a, uh, a living sacrifice. The gospel saved. I would say um, also uh, First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians nine verse twenty seven. You pull that one over First Corinthians nine twenty seven. But I keep under my body and bring it to the Not to, not today, no. First Corinthians nine twenty seven. Because those scriptures are scriptures. I just. Mm -hmm. Read them and then ponder. Because now, when we read the scriptures and we see how Job was put in, from the time he was born, that was the man that was a He was always doing something. He was always doing good. So he was a target. He was a perfect target. He was always doing good and then we got to do why his best to always do the right thing. Okay. So when Satan had to attack, Satan had the perfect target to attack. Yeah, be, yeah, be careful. Because um because I know Esau has something to do with that too with the paintings. So every time I see pictures of him in the in the church, or whatever, he looked like Rip Van Winkle on the, a well or something, something crazy. Some old man like like Santa Claus. Really? But uh like you said, those chapters it's kind of like the gospel. Gospel focuses on a key part of Christ's life, not other parts, but a key part as far as the the, the gospel mainly. Mm -hmm. But this Job's a big book. Like you said, most of his life, when you read the beginning, how it starts off, mm -hmm. he did pretty well for himself. But he did the right thing at the same time, acknowledging that things could go wrong at a moment's notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. All his life, he has been doing that. And so he was wealthy, I think, than all the men of the East at that time. So I don't like when in the world when they say it was absolute power corrupts and power corrupts absolutely. I'm not, I don't know about that. Depends on, the, depends on the man, depends on the woman, depends on their character. Maybe amongst you, okay. But they'll put that out there as a blanket statement. Like, oh, yeah, too much power is a bad thing. Well, for you, that's been your track record. But not for everybody. Because what happened is when you have uh, a perception like that, that you might be by your right to do Now you're going to see people that are keeping that in team. Yep. Just to let, to let your hand get on some resources, they keep for that work. Yep. So he, he was a perfect father. Taking uh, everything away from him, in uh, yeah. everything that he's been doing from his youth up, mm -hmm. to find himself in this situation, you would say, man, that's not fair. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's what his friends were saying. <laughs> They're like, you had to do something wrong, dude. Something to be going through all this? Nah, something you did, man. Come on, really? And, but it's like they're saying that, but at the same time, they know Joe. And they're just like, why him? Your guy, why is he doing this to you? You know? And they're even speaking about our guy, right? Like, as far as the knowledge they had about him, like uh, Elifaz, the Temanite. Right? Even even he was like he charged his angels with foul. He's going to sit there. So it's like, oh, Esau, you knew about that. Huh? 
I guess there's no discussion. People, have, people always have opinion. Yeah. Because his friends were, were heathens, right? You see it at the end as far as where he comes to comes to them. You see he steps to uh, Eliphaz first. <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah it's another thing. But uh, yeah, with 9 and 49 to, to 50. Link uh, Leviticus 2 and 13. Leviticus 2 and 13. And also uh, 1 Corinthians 9 27. Let me finish up here. I'll read 49 again and then read 50. So it says, For everyone shall be salted with fire. That's what gives us uh, our grace, right? When we go through uh, the furnace of adversity, it makes us better, right? It improves our character, as it did Job, since we know we've been talking about him as a bit. Everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt had lost its saltness, Wherewith will ye season it? Mm-hmm. Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Right? So have that flavor, right? And that flavor that comes with, you know, being rich in the fruit of the spirit, which we know oftentimes when we go through things, it uh, it increases them many fold. Right? We can't just be like, yes, I have faith. Oh, both sides of is great. Okay, I'm going to prove you now. I'm going to have to go through something to see if you really got it. Mm-hmm. Once you overcome, in your faith, actually, like a stock price, as it, and you got more faith now after overcoming that. Oh, now you got more patience after overcoming this. Mm-hmm. Oh, now you got more experience by overcoming that. Mm-hmm. All these these little things, with the from the annoyances to the to the big problems in our lives, that we may see them and say, "Why me? I'm following God, I'm following Christ. Why me?" All these things are. Shaping us to be better men and women of Israel to be more fit to rule this earth, to be on Christ's team, right? So, like it says, oh yeah, I think I mentioned it. You can just write it down. Uh, Colossians four and six. Colossians four and six. They go with this as well, which says, uh, "Let your words be." Uh, Always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may, may know how you may ought to answer every man. Yeah, you can add that one too. Mm-hmm. All right. So have salt, but don't be salty. Yeah, and that's it. Right. So we'll, we'll conclude here. Next week, we're going to read Second Edges 7 and 8. Got it on deck. Mm-hmm. No uh, scratching at the head as we usually do. Uh, hold on now. Second Edges 7 and 8 will be next week's reading. Second Edges 7 and 8. Definitely make sure you check that out uh, during the week when you have uh, your free time. Like we were talking about before, brother, about the, the good practice, having like a half hour to an hour mm-hmm. where you just go through your notes, read, read through scriptures. Mm-hmm. Once the half hour is up, stop. Only stop if you feel like you want to go forward, but just keep that as a pattern. Because all those little half hours or hours add up. Before you know it, you're remembering scriptures. You actually, you you actually laugh at your own notes, being like, "What the heck was I right?" Mm-hmm. You just spend a little bit of time every day actually going through them. You'd be surprised some stuff you write down. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Didn't it? Okay. So that will say uh, a short Shabbat. Most of us will talk to everybody this upcoming week in the classes and the Sabbath service to come, as well as the. Uh, new moon and we'll make uh announcements next week as far as uh the next new moon as well as uh the next high holiday which is coming up uh, a month from now and the end of the month actually about a little bit under two months away i mean a little over a month and a half away the next one to keep you 
So we'll talk about that this upcoming week. So Shar uh, Shabbat, enjoy the rest of your Sabbath, however long you have in the rest of uh, the Sabbath day, wherever you may be in the East Coast or and beyond. And with that, we'll do the closing prayers. So Shalom and Shar Shabbat. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I was I was looking for a different reason, but yeah, when's, when's the next time she's coming That's him. You, 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 his face is different to you. I got the wrong guy. Always. I thought that was the same guy. Yeah. Talk. Barakatay Hawa by Shimmy Hawa Shai, a Sharan from the Nile party at Gotham to Wada Amma. Lai Hawa by Shimmy Hawa Shai. Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kushai, Shammai, Lanawa, Yan, Aitha, Shalak, Maika Allah, Waha Allah Hayam, Tazwadakim, La, Shamar Ayo, Barak, Rapa, Magan, Wach, Chazayam, Thank you. Four corners. Yahawa, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Barak Nawa, Wayasha Allah, Wabafia Saparium, Shemai, Yasharele, Yahweh, Allah Hai Nawa, Yahweh, English translation. Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shai, bless us in Israel in the house of books. And then we said, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. With that, we'll say a shah shabbat. Shalom. We'll talk to you this upcoming week. Shalom. Shalom. So men circle up.
PSVU in the capstone. Remember, right? 